So what we have here is uh, a D620 that was sent in to us. And as you can tell, with this system we have uh, Intel chipsets and an NVIDIA chipset here. And it has the uh, VRAM cores, uh, just two of them though. So what we're going to have to do is uh, reflow this uh, section right here. Then we're going to reflow this portion then reflow this and that is most likely uh, going to fix any issues with it but just the same as all other systems we're going to have to uh, do a uh, we'll have to do a burn in test on it and such as that but what's going to happen is we're going to swing this arm over I'm gonna check everything see uh, how it is Pretty much the same setup as the uh, DV uh, NVIDIA systems or the uh, ATI chipsets on the uh, other systems. Uh, no special time is needed for the actual uh, uh, reflow. You know, you don't. You can use the same time as you do with the DVs. That's explained in the DB4 video. It goes through temperature profiles and actual uh, reflowing of it. And what we're going to do here is just uh, heat this one up. And we'll go through every chipset like that. Same heat profile, same distances, uh, same configuration. Uh, time is pretty much the same. There's no need to let it sit for... 20 minutes and then do it for five minutes and then up the temperature and do this and do that uh, that's only for variables uh, outside the IR system and that would be for say a uh, heat gun a heat gun would do something such as that so what we're going to do is move this up and then heat this chipset and we'll let it sit like this and then uh, we'll move it across and heat the other chipset uh, probably have to cut the uh, actual light off to get that repositioned but that's pretty common with this what you don't want to do is flex the board um, laying like that it doesn't flex the greatest deal that you have to worry about is flexing caused by heat heat actually draws the units up and causes flexing like that so what you do is you heat the bottom to cause it to lay flat and uh, that keeps the solder joints and everything uh, stable so when you heat the heat the bottom and you heat the top side of the board uh, what you're doing is pretty much uh, trying to keep the system together and keep it, uh, you know, where it's supposed to be. So now we're going to try to position this and get it to do what it needs to do. Uh, probably have to move these legs in. It's kind of hard to do this one handed, but hey, it happens. Alright, so let's see if we're close enough. Uh, not quite. Probably gonna have to position it this way. So as you're readjusting it, make sure that you allow the heater to actually hit the chipset uh, from the bottom for a certain amount of time. What you don't want to do is go without the uh, chipset being uh, heated from the bottom because it will cause the board to flex and it will cause issues. So what we're going to do is uh, lower that down to where it's supposed to be then we're going to turn it on. Now with these systems uh, I've had questions about the uh, coprocessors blistering from excessive heat. Uh, you do not heat them, you know, for any 
any special amount of time. You don't heat them over what you would heat these for. You don't heat them under what you would heat those for. You heat it just the same, same distance, same temperature, same, uh, same everything. Just make sure that when you're heating it, that you do not allow the light to actually touch it. And that when you do it, you keep an, keep an account that, uh, you count the exposures, not the actual, uh, length of time. That's what's going to be the big deal with these exposure rate not the length of time so we're gonna let this uh, heat up then we're gonna cut the light off and then we'll let it cool down so what we're gonna do is go from here to let it cool down and then we will uh, heat these VRAMs uh, separate and then uh, we'll test it out and see what's what's going with it if it works or not so what we have now is the uh, Dell series laptop. So we'll just run the burn in simultaneously with the other HP. So what we're going to do is uh, turn it on. We did it just like we did the uh, other ones uh, to make sure that you know everything was fine with it. And. Um, now we got it to turn on. But what you don't want to do is touch the keyboard. So we'll get this to start up into uh, the BIOS. Time of day, blah, blah, blah. So get it to go in. And it looks like uh, it started up. So what we're going to do is let it run the clock. For two hours and uh, after that we'll say that it's done but uh, it's pretty much the same uh, there we go date and time so now we're running it just uh, at the same time two hours two hour burn in same as the other one uh, and we'll run it like that and let it do what it's gonna do and then we'll come check it later and make sure everything's good on it. Cut the screen off and then go from there. So now we've uh, run our uh, Dell board. Uh, it's actually a D620. But we've run this board for approximately uh, three hours now. And everything seems to be good on it. So what we're going to do is turn it off and put it together. But uh, before we do that, um, we're going to uh, test a few other things as far as the memory goes. Uh, then we're going to have to put the hard drive into it and make sure that uh, everything checks out that way. As far as the memory not being bad. Uh, VRAM, we'll test it too at the same time. But uh, burn-in seems to have run perfectly fine on it. Motherboard sounds like it's structurally good. And it appears to be good. Uh, not too terribly hot. So we're going to say that the um, the chipsets are actually working and everything's good with it. So we'll say this one's going to be done for right now until we put it together and test it out. <laughs> 